Hello friends, Atlas here again. Uh, I have for you today a Great Nature Premium deck profile. Um, this is a this is the same one that you saw me play against Gabe, and I lost because Gabe is Gabe, and I am his bitch forever. Hooray. Anyway, um, Great Nature is a deck in premium format that can do good things, but uh, has a bit of a problem with the fact that some, you know, some decks did premium better than it. That doesn't make it a bad deck by any means. I believe it to be a solid road option, if we're speaking in Yu-Gi-Oh-ish terms. Uh, also, I'm going to play Great Nature whatever whatever the format is, so this is just how it is. All right, let's get started. Um, Starting off, we have uh, Blackboard Parrot. Uh, when you ride on top of it, draw a card. So, uh, originally I had Telescope Rabbit, which uh, you could, the one that could dope something early game. And I decided to go back to Blackboard Parrot because I realized that most of the time you were doing the Telescope Rabbit Mike Zabro combo to get you one card. Yes, it was a specific card, but this gives you a card guaranteed without the use of another card. It's a one-card combo. Um, I think by seeing more cards uh, early game, it will it will help you more in the long run versus, like, trying to go, like, all right, yeah, cool, I got Leopold, I guess. Um, this deck also focuses less on the whole, like, Zoa Rhino thing, and by that I mean I took out Rhino completely, uh, so as to make all of your rides at least decent, and uh, yeah, so that's why I went back to the V-Starter. Um, four copies of School Hunter Leopold. Um, so, Excel Gift, Grade 3, 12k. Uh, when you ride him, you mill the top part of your deck, and then uh, check uh, if it's a normal unit, you check top four, call up to two grade two or less cards from among those, and put the rest in deck and shuffle. And then if it's a trigger unit, he gets 15k and a crit. If you rode this over a grade three, when you do the skill, you get to do it twice twice. Anyway, um, so you're going to do this, A, for the Excel Circle, B, it's a skill that allows you to do things before you stride, um, C, it allows you to fill board without using your hand, and uh, D, it's just a good card. The only downside is that if you wanted to stride and you milled triggers, you're taking triggers out of the deck, and you're getting 15k and a crit for nothing. Now, normally, in, like, with how Vanguard decks are built, you only have 16 of those, so the chances of getting a normal unit off the mill are higher. So it's not that much of a risk, but I do think that the, quote, risk is worth it. So, four of them. Four copies of Amazing Professor Big Belly. One of them is SP. I wish the other three were also. Uh, he's a grade three with the success ability and 11k. Um, when you ride him or stride over him, you choose a card from your hand, you can choose a card from your hand, call it, it gets 4k, and at the end of the turn, draw and retire. Um, it sucks that it's not once per turn, meaning that you would be able to do that twice, oh well. I also wish that it would let you pick something already on board if you wish. I wish it was like, call up to one, then choose one, but can't win them all. Um, so that allows you to, uh, you know, get some aggression going if you're in early game. Because it could be something that you could kill uh, with Mike Saburo on board, so you get a search and a draw. The other skill, and the more important one, is on Vader Rear. When he after, at the end of the battle, he attacks anything if he's successful. So if he's if he saw a rear guard get twenty k or more power, or past the twenty k threshold, you can counterblast, choose a rear guard, and stand it, and give it four k. So this is basically a second copy of Crayon Tiger. It doesn't kill the thing it stands, so that takes some planning. Like, you don't always have to, like, all right, I'm going to stand this, and then it dies. No, you got to, like, keep that in mind. The other part is that um, he doesn't have to attack Vanguard for that. So that's neat, where he can pick off a rear guard and then stand something else. So, yeah, super solid card. Wish I had more SPs of him. Three copies of Bicolor Baku. So a lot of stuff rushes nowadays. Uh, he's an 11k grade 2, and uh, he's got success 20k on Vanna Rear. And then his other skill is that at the end of the turn, if he is not successful, you choose a rear guard, retire it, and put it on the bottom of your deck. 
So that procs any skills that activate when retired from rear, like Mike Saburo. It also means you can rush early and then kill something, put it to bottom, like a trigger, and then search a grade 3 off of it. Um, I mostly did this uh, after getting rushed to death by like everything, and uh, in a later game he's going to be successful like, all the time, so he's just going to be a beast sick. That's why he's at 3 and not 4. Um, a lot of the cards... A lot of the grades, or all the grade threes in this deck, none of them are at four of, which means that this, after literal years of being at a four of all the time, is a given. Three crayon tiger. It's a tragedy, I know. Um, grade two, 9k. Once per turn, when he attacks a vanguard, if he's boosted, counterblast, stand something, give it 4k, and at the end of the turn, draw and retire that rear guard. Um, so, if. Crayon gets Denial Griffin, you still get the draw at the end of the turn because the skill has already gone off. Um, it's a way to, you can like restand the same thing over and over if you have multiple of them. I had him at four, and at Gabe's suggestion, I cut it down to three because he's kind of, he's not useful in early game at all. Um, so you want to see him a little less. And now with the advent of Amazing Professor Big Belly, that's seven copies where there was four before. So I do think that's pretty solid for a card, and it also means I have more room in the grade 2 space for things like Bicolor Baku and the other stuff. Um, it hurt to do, I will say that, but uh, I, I I gotta give him props for making a good call, so. Good on Gabe. Three copies of uh, Field Blast Honor. So, grade 2, uh, 9k, he has the success ability at 20k on rear. Um, when played GB1, you can you can pick a you can pick a rear guard, give it 4k, and at the end of the turn tire that unit. So there is a misprint; it got eroded. The you pick a rear guard and you may give it 4k. So it is not mandatory. Typically, you're going to give it to himself. But um, the other skill is at the end of the turn, if he's successful, you can bounce him to your hand. Um, if you have multiple copies of this, this and uh, what's his name? Um, Ballot Earl is a great combo because you can rush your opponent and then pull them back to your hand before they die. It's also a great early game because you can fill the board with, you know, these grade twos, poke your opponent with them, then get them back to your hand before they get bullied. And also giving yourself counter blast. Um, I've used this card for a long time. I don't see a lot of other decks playing it, but I find it vastly underrated and I highly recommend giving it a try. Two copies of Binoculus Tiger. So, um, 9k grade 2, when he attacks a vanguard, vanner rear, you counterblast mill a card, and then if it's a normal unit, you draw a card, if it's a trigger unit, retire one of the opponent's rear guards and give three units in your front row 5k. Um, the reason I have this at lesser numbers than something like Field Blast Otter or the next card after this is because I found myself running out of counter blasts if I ran too many copies of Binoculus and Crayon and Big Belly and a few other things at the same time. So I cut them down to two. Um, typically you're probably just going to be doing it in the early game because you risk decking out by using the skill too much, which is also a reason to run less copies of it. It doesn't make it a bad card though. It's also the only card in Great Nature that allows you to retire the opponent's stuff, which can come in handy. I am looking squarely at you, Honolly. Two copies of Guru Wolf. So, pretty simple card. If he hits Vanguard at 20k or more power, draw a card. Good pretty much any time of the game except when your opponent's at 5 damage. Um, allows you to make the Battle Earl turns funnier because you're like, alright, if I hit, I draw. God damn it. Two cards. Um, so, yeah, pretty solid card. Uh, you don't really need more than two because it only works on rear. Uh, you're essentially getting the same benefit by doing Binoculus because he also draws you a card involving attacking. Um, and, you know, the difference being that this has to hit and that it's free versus requiring a counter blast. So, if you want to run more of him, you can, you know, cut down on a field blast otter, do a 3 2 thing, or uh, if you end up wanting to run four of him, which I don't know why you would, but let's say you do. Uh, cut a field blast and uh, cut a binoculus, but I highly do not recommend that. Okay, great ones. We have four copies of Monoculus Tiger. So on Vanner Rear, when he attacks or boosts, you soul blast, mill the top card of your deck. If it's a normal unit, 
the attack he is attacking or boosting uh, cannot be guarded by Sentinel. And then if it is a trigger unit, the opponent can only guard that attack with triggers. Uh, mostly used for your kill turns. Uh, also, the fact that it is a flexible card with a 10k shield is a grade one. Um, like, calling it to an Excel circle or something is also very potent. And I really don't think I need to sing this thing's praises. It was more useful in the, like, the Zoa Rhino combo, where it was a third of your win condition. But that doesn't mean that it makes it a bad card. Now, that said, I also run two copies of the new Stamp Sea Otter, which is literally the old Stamp Sea Otter, except it's 8k and has 10k shield instead of being 6k with 5k shield. He cannot be retired by card effects, so uh, Shadow Paladin can eat a dick, um, where they're like, all right, choose something to retire, and you go, I choose that, and then you smirk at them, and then they sigh and move on with their life. Um, I know it's a little weird to like run stuff just for the shield, but it does come in handy to a you can like rush with it and then even if, even if you give it doping effects like you know like it, move it up and then do battle earl it's not gonna it's not gonna die and um it's a overall flexible card if you want to run less monoculus tiger for whatever reason just up the amount of stamp sea otters but don't put either of them to zero because they're rather important just for their shield and for their uh their flexibility and skill Three copies of Honorary Assistant Mike Saburo. Mike Saburo, Mike the TA. Uh, on place during your main phase, pick a rear guard, and then it gets red text when it's put in drop zone. During the end phase, search your deck for grade three, add it to hand, and shuffle. So that's why that we're only running grade eight grade threes, because this essentially is three extra copies of it. Only really good in the early game. Uh, it's still good as like a way to search out an extra crayon tiger or your co you know, your cost for Zoa or Megaloma or an extra Excel circle. It's really good. I I used to run more of it and copies of Duckbill, but then I realized that if you call it off of Leopold's skill, it does not get the ability because it's R during main phase. Now I thought that if the opponent was not at grade three, when you because the rule is when you ride your ride phase ends, but it was pointed out to me that you still have to resolve any skills that are going on during ride phase, so it, this basically becomes moot, and uh, that's why it's down to three. Um, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can always, like, like let's say you want to run copies of Rhino or something, start cutting these for copies. Um, or, alternatively, you can cut them for more copies of this. The Stride Fodder. You are always going to need Stride Fodder. People are like, oh, but Progenitor Dragons. First off, the Zoo Progenitor Dragon is dog shit in most situations. Secondly, this allows you to search Big Belly, which is really cool, because you, so the still is when placed on uh, rear from hand. So again, no abusing this with Leopold. You can reveal a grade 3, search deck for a Big Belly card, then drop a card. So I'm going to switch out this Guru Wolf for a copy of this Big Belly that I can use to restand the other Guru Wolf I have on Rear Circle. The other still is he is a grade 3 when you discard him for stride. So, pretty simple. Um, yeah, if you are uncomfortable running that many Mike Mike Saburo or that few grade 3s, start cutting mics for either more copies of stride fodder or more grade 3s. Um, one copy of Light Elemental Homily. So, multi-attack decks are annoying. Um, so the still is, when he's on rear, if an attack, uh, y y all rear guards cannot attack the vanguard in the fifth or more battle of that turn unless counter blast is paid. Um, that includes your own. So just keep that in mind. Don't be putting this and then doing the big belly turn with all the big bellies and the crayon tiger because you're going you're gonna to fuck yourself over. The other still is when he's placed on rear, you have to take a card from your damage turn it face down. So if you have all your damage face down, then it doesn't matter. The important thing is that you can call this during the opponent's turn with a G-Guard and shut their turn off. Um, it's also a decent card to call off with a Leopold skill if, you know, the opponent doesn't have any removal but likes to multi-attack. Uh, I would say Neonectar, but it doesn't affect them all that much. Hint, hint, go watch the game between, uh, the games between Gabe and I because, uh, yeah, I'm an unlucky bastard. Slash Neonectar is top tier. Um... But yeah, pretty solid. Uh, you don't really need to run it at more than one. Um, I guess you can run it at two if you really want. I, I disagree. All right, 
onto the triggers, two V heels, and two of the counter charge soul charge heels. Um, you need heals, that allows you to get counter charge or soul charge because Great Nature doesn't do well with soul, so you're most likely going to be using it for that, but occasionally you will use it for the counter charge. So, pretty simple. I like also having like plus 10k power on my heal triggers for draw PGs because we used to have a PG that was great. It was, uh, if you if you guarded, if it was placed on rear guard circle or guard circle when you had a big belly vanguard, you could Soul Blast to draw and counter charge, which made it free. But we not all, we're not on Big Belly all the time anymore. And I I weep for uh, what used to be. So in the meantime, we have these draw PGs. Still pretty damn solid. Uh, our green one lineup is fairly crowded. Maybe we'll, you know... It's more flexible than the grade 2 lineup, but it's still something that I would... I like draw triggers, and I like PGs. So next, we have our uh, premium collection... Heart Thumb Clone Guy, the Critical Trigger, and it is, I shit you not, his name is Curious Pony. So I guess, like, they got somebody, like, a brony to design, design the crit for Great Nature. Whatever. Anyway, so, uh, like every crit for our, for every clan, um, GB1, when your Vanguard attacks, Shovin Soul, draw, Vanguard gets plus 10k. So, this is a thing you can call off Leopold now, where before it was like, alright, I got two crits and a heal and a draw PG. I don't want to call any of those. This is at least less shitty um, off of Leopold still. It allows you to get soul, which is great because uh, Gr uh, Great Nature doesn't do soul too well. And um, yeah, everybody should be running this. I highly recommend just stocking up like for literally every clan on these because they will continue to be valuable. And then lastly you have uh, four uh, v crits. So I, I did two and two just for the serendipity. You can do whatever you want. I am a fan of Triangle Cobra myself. All right, onto the G zone. First off, just for the flex. Yeah, buddy, those are real. All right. Um, starting off, we have two copies of Omniscient Dragon Managarm Aurum. So this is the guy we got in Premium Collection, and he's pretty damn solid, and I was riding high, and then I saw the awesome power of Katarina and uh, Ichikishima, and I got sad. Anyway, uh, it's once per turn, you counterblast, uh, turn any card in G-Zone face up. So that's one of the cool things about Great Nature, is pretty much every stride just turns anything face up, which means you can run a lot of tech options for the sake of, like, matchups, which I will get to in a bit. But turn anything face up. Mill four cards from your deck, and then if you, for each card, you do a thing. So if it's a normal unit, you give a unit plus 10k power, and then if it's a trigger unit, our room here gets an extra drive check. Typically, I have found that I get three normal units and a trigger unit. I'm not sure why, but quad drive and giving 10k to three things is pretty solid. And then his other skill is when he is face up in G Zone, uh, when your Vanguard attacks, you can Soul Blast and call a card from hand. So. Both of these are super solid and super flexible. Are you behind? Do you is this the only card you have on board? Well guess what? You can give like 30k power to our room himself and give him quad drive. Why the fuck not? Did he get sex tuple drive? That's my record, by the way. Six drive checks. Uh sure. Then give 10k to that uh that crayon tighter so it can hit in case they take a trigger on damage. That other effect is really cool because if you have stuff that like is gonna die, you can just call over it with that skill, the Soul Blast skill. Um, not often will I turn up himself or something, you know, you know, off of it, but the fact that you can is amazing. So, good on him. I love him. Um, Alright, two copies of Omniscient's Dragon Battle Earl. I got the text boxless one from Premium, or from Revival Collection, and you can't stop me. Anyway. Um, once per turn, you Soul Blast, turn a card in G-Zone face up, that is anything, like I said before, and then, uh, all of your rear, or all of your units in the front row get plus 4k for every card face up in G-Zone, and they all get red text when they hit the opponent's Vanguard draw card, and then all of your rear guards die at the end phase that were on board when you did this, because it gives it red text. Um, this is typically a... You G-guarded early, and this is your first stride, so now everything is like plus 8k. And then on hit, everything gets draw. 
you're typically going to use this when it's about, you know, mid-range, like, like Shadow and Royal Paladins this is great against. Um, anything that's overly aggressive, you're probably not going to end up using that. But guess what? You can turn it face up with anything else. Um, I think if we end up getting, like... Something else, I might cut it down to one, because I never really use it more than twice, but uh, it's still a very solid card, so hurry for him. Oh, and no Counterblast. So cool, if you're playing against Gizeh or something. Um, one copy of Omniscient Dragon, Afunk. So, I don't see a lot of people playing this, but I play it, because this fucks over Conqueros so hard. Uh, Counterblast 1, turn anything face up. Starting to see a pattern here. Um, and then you pick any number of rear guards on your side, and they get red text. This unit cannot be retired by card effects. And then Afon himself gets 4k for everything you chose. So, what it's trying to do is make it so that all your doping effects. <coughs> Oops. What it's trying to do is make all your doping effects so that they don't, you know, kill your stuff. The important thing is that because that works for the whole turn, Denial Griffin can go suck a lemon. Um, I, I used this during the uh, Anaheim Regional this past uh, spring, early summer, and uh, I was playing against the Kagura guy, and I remember a, a specific game where I went into this. He goes to G-Guard, he pulls out Denial Griffin, he stares at it, he stares at Alfonk, he puts Denial Griffin away. This is before he counterblasted, so I let him do it. And he pulls out Defeat Flare, puts it away, pulls out Denial Griffin again, size, and then puts down another 10k to, uh, so the attack was guarded. It was my favorite moment of anything ever. Um, I love this thing just for literally stuff like that. And then if I'm not playing Kagero, I turn it face up with Aurum, so cool. Um, next up, one copy of the Leopold Stride. So if you have a Leopold Heart, which, come on, you probably will, um, when he attacks, you pick a rear guard, give it 4k. And then the ability, red text, it dies at end phase, and then also red text, that when that unit is retired, you search for a copy of it and add it to hand. Um, I don't use this often, I mostly use it just for uh, counterblast denial stuff. Like if I only have one counterblast and I want to save it for that crayon tiger, I'll go into this and like, you know, do it just so you can dope one specific thing uh, without killing your whole front row, which you would do with Battle Earl. So, cool. Um, one copy of Kill Timka. So, he's success 25k, so he just has to see something go over, or 25k or bigger. When he does, you pick four cards from your drop zone, put them on the bottom of your deck, pick a rear guard, and then it gets, uh, you know, you 4k, and then at the end of the turn, draw and retire it. The important thing is that if you, uh, are about to deck out, this lets you not deck out for longer, so... Um, pretty solid option, and guess what? It's another counter-blastless thing, so suck on that knees, eh? Um, two copies of the Big Belly Stride, and the last remaining vestige of the four SP packs that I bought. Dumbest purchase I've ever made. Anyway, um, still is, uh, once per turn, act counter-blast, turn a copy of him face up, pick a, rear, uh, pick a unit, so that can, can include himself. He gets, or it gets 4k for every card face up in g -Zone when you do that. And then you can pick a rear guard, which can be the thing you picked itself, or anything else. And then it gets red text when it hits Vanguard. Choose any number of other rear guards from, you know, number of cards face up in g -Zone and then stand those. Typically what you want to do is have this and a bunch of open counter blast and big bellies and crayon tigers everywhere, and then just be re-standing the same thing over and over. This puts an immense amount of pressure on the opponent, and it's a great way to come back after the opponent just rushed you down for a bunch of big numbers. It's, um, I've done the, like, alright, I have a bunch of heals and G-guard into stuff and start doing all that kind of kind of things. Still a great card. Um, if this ever goes out of style, I am getting my SP pack framed, because that is the only way I can deal with the pain. A uh, copy of Zoa, and a copy of Megaluma. So... The Zeroth and Progenitor Dragons. The Zoa is counterblast kind of when you ultimate stride it. So three cards face up in G zone, same copy as Vanguard. Counterblast kind of two, draw a card, call it. Um, it becomes 99,999, and then when it, it gets red text when it hits Vanguard, you win the game. So the idea is to use that with Monoculus Tiger. So if you do that, or if it's Monoculus Tiger itself, it can be. Um, 
that means that no Sentinels at 99,999 or triggers only, um, which usually, like, they're probably just going to Sentinel you. Um, the important thing is that it's a way to block, uh, you know, block plays. I usually, before it was with Rhino, now it's like kind of a desperation thing. Um, I wouldn't call it a bad, it's never, it's not a bad card at all, but it's a little riskier now that I changed the deck some. The other one, speaking of risky, is uh, Megaloma, so same copy as Vanguard. Um, can't be turned face up by card effects, and then if it's face up during your, uh, you know, during your turn, you can stride without paying the cost. And then when you do stride it, you discard two, and then at any point, <laughs> I can't stop laughing at this, at any point during this turn or the next turn, if you would lose, you put your hand and your damage back into the deck, <laughs> and then you shuffle, put five cards from the top of the deck into the damage zone, and then end the opponent's turn. So, should be noted, I'm sure Gabe went over this, but uh, when you get to, if the opponent crits you from five, that means you would you'd lose, you'd do the thing, and then you put five, and you still have to take one more damage because you're still in the middle of being crit. So just keep that in mind. It also loses you the entire hand, which means your opponent, if they're smart, will start killing rear guards so that you can't really make a good comeback. Um, I would recommend going into this if you're super far behind. If you are like, all right, I have this Leopold, I have another copy of Leopold, I have like nothing else. Fuck it. Just go into it, and then you get a strike for free. Maybe like you put a bunch of triggers back. That's something. Um, probably not going to use it all that much, but it's an option. All right. For G guards, we have uh, Eris Spangled. So GB1. When you G-Guard with her, you counterblast, turn her card face up in G-Zone, and then you can give all of your grade 3 or less Guardians the red text. Yeah, that's better. Um, red text that when uh, when they retire from Guard Circle, you draw a card. So you have to populate your Guard Circle with other stuff first, then go in her as the last thing. Um, otherwise, you will get rule shards, probably by me at some regional. But um, this is great because, let's say, the opponent is hitting you for some huge attack and there's another one coming on the way. You can kind of throw your hand at the wall and then draw four cards to replace the four cards you just used to guard. Very, very useful card. Um, let's see, one copy of uh, Al Mirage. So before, I used to run a second copy of Kundalini, which you will see in a second. But I started running this when uh, multi-attack became a thing, and uh, Hanali can be called mid-battle phase. So, um, when you junior with him, you can Soul Blast 1, call up to 4, or is it... Sorry, call up to 2 things, then pick 4 units. They get resist, and then uh, even if they're hit, they don't retire. So, um, what you want to be calling off of this is Hanali, otherwise it's just a flip target for Spangled. Um, pretty solid. Like I said, I used to run this instead, Kundalini, which uh, when you do guard, you pick a rear guard, and then give it the red text. Uh, at the end of the turn, retire that uh, rear guard, and then counter charge one. And then if you do that, Kundalini is 5k shield. Um, so now that you have Stamp Sea Otter back, you can just choose it and get the counter charge for free. I used to run her at two because that means you could do two at once and get a counter charge two by just retiring one. Um, but Hanali became too important and Al Mirage came into the picture that way. So Kundalini is still good. Uh, one copy of Ardella. Um, when you G-Guard with it, you can retire any number of rear guards. And then for every open, uh, if you have three or more open rear guard circles, he gets uh, plus 10k shield. So because of Excel circles, this is like free as hell. Um, yeah, pretty solid card. And then lastly, there is Sankapa. So, um, if I had more Counterblast to work with, I would probably run this instead of the uh, second one of this instead of Ardillo. But when you G-Guard with it, you pick him, you pick Vanguard and one of your rear guards, and then they both get 4k power for each open circle. Now, that is different from having open rear guard circles like Ardillo. Open circles includes locked cards. So, if Link Joker becomes a thing again, this still works. Um, after you do that, if your rear guard that you chose as part of the effect is at 20,000 power or more, you draw a card. So that's a great way. This is a great first 
uh, G guard. Like if you went first and the opponent strided on you first, I love this thing. Um, I would. <laughs> it'd be fucking cool if the 4K power for each thing worked for the whole turn, but it doesn't. Oh well. Uh, yeah. So that same helper. And that was your premium Great Nature deck profile. Now, I, uh, I know I ripped on it a lot, but I truly do love Great Nature. I, you know, I'm probably a little salty from yesterday's filmings, which you will see on the channel. Um, but, you know, I, I love Vanguard, and I'm saying that seriously. Um, I love Great Nature, and I love you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe, donate to the Patreon, all that shit. See you next time.